You're listening to This Is Ibrox, your Rangers podcast, brought to you by Triple H Mortgages, the one-stop shop for all your mortgage and mortgage insurance needs. Contact them on 01453 887179 or via email hello at hhhmortgages.com. This is Ibrox. Run away, run away tonight, leave the city, we'll be fine Blowing up like dynamite, I never meant to make you cry Make your mind up Hello and welcome to another episode of the This Is Ibrox, the women's football podcast I'm William Boyd and I'm delighted to be joined by Courtney McKenzie Hello Courtney Hello guys, how are you? Pleasant for this one And Graham Falk Always good, mate. Like I said before, f- off air, I've got my wine. I'm happy. I'm all right. I was a little bit late, so that might make you panic a bit more. So forgive me for that in advance. No, no, nobody's as nervous as me. Trust me. <laughs> and I'm delighted to say we're joined by head coach Malcolm Thompson. Malcolm, yeah, Malky, how are you doing? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, great to be back. Um, for me personally as well, great to be back at, at training and, and being able to, to, to actually talk to you guys and promote the, the women's game, promote First and foremost, Rangers women's game. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Now, I, I suppose that'll take me right on to the first question. What's it like, you know, after a sort of long layoff, I would say, a couple of weeks, what's it like trying to get the, the girls back up into kind of match sharpness? Yeah, it's been it's been a bit of a journey. This is my first season um, being full-time professionals. So, um, and obviously, with the, the pandemic, with COVID hitting, we, we, I think we've, we've actually started and stopped and started again. Um, and I suppose second time round, this is us starting again. But we've, we've learned for the first time um, where we've got a great, we've got a wealth of a wealth of knowledge at the club um, in terms of the coaching staff and, and and everybody else ancillary that's round about. So for 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 the girls, um, the support network has been second to none. And they, they, they got a lot of individual programmes that they, they went and worked on. But I think the mere fact of getting back to the point that it's their first year at being professional, so they're so eager, so keen, um, so dogmatic in their approach and re- relentless in their approach that they've um, that they've been they've been a credit to themselves and, and, it, and it shows in the way that they've came back, the physical state that they've came back in uh, has been good, you know. We're hitting good numbers in training in terms of the distances that they're covering. But not just that, we, when we first started um, putting the thing together and being professional, was what does a professional, what does a, a professional entail? What does it mean to them? So it was a wee bit, and because the, the, the players hadn't been professional before, it was about, it was almost like a blank canvas, and that, well, let, let's, let's put it down here, let, let's, let's take it to another level. Um, and and it's, been, it's been fantastic to, to see them come back in such a good state. No, it's good to, to hear and hopefully they're, they're willing to go for, for Sunday, you know, it's a big game, so I'm sure the, the girls will be, and yourself will be looking forward to that one. Um, just kind of want to kind of go back and maybe go back to how you kind of got involved in the game, Okay, it's just to kind of get a wee backdrop and how you eventually got to, to the role you're in the now. Yeah, well, I think I've been, you know, I kind of play, played with Aberdeen, um, as a 13-year-old, I signed a schoolboy for me, Aberdeen, um, with Alec Ferguson. Uh, went full-time at 16. And then at the age of 24, I had to stop playing because I had a problem in my back. I had three prolapsed discs in my back. Um, and then it was, where, where was I going to go? What was I going to do? And I, 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 I kind of quickly got into coaching. I, I love work, working with people. I love speaking, as you're probably, you know, you're probably listening tonight. Um, I've got an enthusiasm for people. I, I really do. I, I think um, one of the night there, you know, talking to Graham there just before he came on, we'll get you know we'll get a, a player that I've obviously worked with that Graham knows. So it's that contact with people that that really inspired me to go into coaching um, and my coaching journey. You know, I've had various clubs. I've worked in the Scottish Premier League. I've worked in the English Premier League, and it's took me it's took me you know into Asia as well, where I've worked in Dubai and then worked in India. So I've been kind of all over the place, but the mainstay for me has been Rangers Football Club. I've been great. You know, this is my my third time back at Rangers um, and had probably every job that you could have at Rangers. Um, 
in there, you know, everything from coaching the under tens right through to now working with the women's first team. Um, and I think it's important that that you know you that I think if you've got an I think if you're not not an ability, I think if you've got a willingness to to put your to put your mind to it, then anything's achievable, you know. So playing career kind of cut short and went straight into coaching, you know. So I thoroughly thoroughly enjoying it, you know. Talking about before, um, sorry to jump in there, Willie, but we're talking before about the girls coming back on Sunday. We talked about the the physical aspect of it, and I think a lot of people do concentrate on the physical aspect of it. And I think I've mentioned on these pods before. I'm involved, not in coaching, but in in media with a women's team who've had a very very similar stoppage. Um, stop start. I think the, the null and void that was season. We've played eight games, and it's the second null and void that we've had. And to be honest with you, the physical side you can sort of work out, work out, and work out, and work out. But the mental side can sometimes be hard, especially when you've got like 18, 19 year olds. And I know that's not so much the case at Rangers across the board, as it may be at some clubs in, in women's football. Um, but when we spoke to Nicola and we spoke to uh, spoke Kirsty, they spoke an awful lot about, yes, the physical elements, but also the mental elements that Rangers offer. The fact that they've got people to speak to if they need something to invest in. Um, is that something, especially in the women's games, that the first kind of time you've seen that sort of thing and how important do you think it is? No, I think... I think everybody goes through a journey. You know, you know yourself. If you know whatever you do, um, you, you want to try and be the best. And I think there's a fear factor in there of failing, whether you're a journalist or whether you're a, a bricklayer, a joiner, or something. You know, or you're starting a new job. Um, and I think it's that. I think when you, I think when, when like what we try, we try to create a different environment at Rangers. We, we try to create an environment where it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to, to do something that, that's not quite right. It's okay to make a mistake. It's no problem at all. Um, but it's what you do after you've you've made a wee mistake, or, or you know you've 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 maybe not had the type of training session that you that you really wanted. How are you going to fix that? So just that being that open minded, um, that that kind of approach. I've 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 always kind of been that way. Even when the men's um, that I've been coaching, you know, the young the young guys right up to. You know, right up to first team. You know, I've, I've been running about the block, been done the United first team, Inverness first team. But there's no difference between you know being being a, a thirty year old experienced player to being a, a ten year old young kid coming in. Um, I think everybody's everybody's always trying to attain and be the best, and you know, and, and show themselves off to their granny, their grandpa, whoever whoever takes care of them, their mum, their dad. And there's a wee bit of pressure there, but we try to we really try to. Make the girls understand the team that we've got. Just now understand that. Come in, try your work as hard as you, as you possibly can, as smart as you possibly can. Give it, give it your hundred percent, and then whatever else happens after that, we'll pick the pieces up, but we'll improve you. So every day you're you're, you're trying to improve yourself, you know. And I think that's the important issue. And I think when you know, when you know that you've got people that you can speak to quite openly about about any subject at all, because I think part of coaching as well is, is to understand people's lives. Everybody's different. Everybody will have their, you know, they'll have their, their, their bits that are great in their life and they'll have their bits that are not so great in their life and they've got to deal with it. But we have a, we have, we have a fantastic, it ranges again, you know, it's a massive club. It's steeped in a historical value that probably other clubs will never, never get. But we, we have a lot of, a lot of people there that, that, that are ancillary to me coaching the girls and, you know, you've got, you got, you know, mental health nurse there, you've got doctors there, you've got physiotherapists there, and I'm putting an, an ist at the end of it because there's not just one, there's two or three. Um, so there's always somebody you can turn to. There's some great, you know, the COVID officers have came in. We've got some great guys, Robert and all these guys that do the COVID officer, retired guys that worked in the railway that are good with kids, good with people. That there is, that there is the, the, the that that helps build a player and, and, and you know, to, to play first team, you know. When it comes to um, that element of the game, then obviously you're someone who's been involved in the game for as long as you have, how much more prevalent has the mental aspect come? So it's sports science, so to speak, just in football as a whole, in, in your experience. Yeah, it's it's just the education. You know, we've got, we've got we've got a great we've got a really diverse team with the women's. So we have we have obviously myself being the the oldest person there, oldest person probably in in, in that side of the building now. But we've got some young staff, we've got female staff, we've got male staff, we've got staff that have came from a different background with a different approach. Um, we've got staff that are really highly educated and ones that have maybe had to work a wee bit harder to get to where they're getting. But 
my job, my job in there is it's, it's the art of thinking independently together. So it's getting all these guys with their ideas to think independently and bring them together. And uh, what a fantastic job they're doing just now because they're, they're in my opinion, they're second to none and they've, they've really took it took it up a level themselves. So they've got the autonomy to go and and you know go and grow the job in, in the direction that that it needs to go in. So it, it, it's it's you're right. The, the, the mental, the mental, the mental approach to it's got to be right by everybody. But everybody must buy into it, and everybody must understand that there's one thing that matters. We're all there for the 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 players in the park. That's it. You know, we're there for the one thing that we're, we're there for those players, and and I think that goes back to again what we're talking about that 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 approach where the players know that there's an army of people in a bit like you spoke to some of the guys there. They know that they can they can talk to. Anybody as they walk in the gate and share share information there, that, and 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 it's either a share information that they want that they want you keep privately or whatever it is, we're just there to help them. You see it come across as well within the the podcast that we've done, the interviews you see on Rangers TV. The very open people. Maybe I'm not saying like oversharing. You don't need to do that, but mm-hmm. they're very open. They seem very natural and comfortable with speaking about what they actually think, what they actually feel. It doesn't feel um sterile like I think some teams can and, and some players can which kind of probably shows how open they feel within the environment that they're in so yeah I thought that was quite an interesting thing just to ask and, and completely interrupt Willie's uh, run of questions there but um, I'm, I'm testing them yeah. uh, Transparency is out I mean we've got to be transparent the girls the girls know I say girls I should say players because I'm trying to be you know that that's the thing we always talk about male players and, and, and female players and you know, it's, it, the players, they're football players. There's no, there's no difference. You know, you guys are on the call and then it's watching. I'm not any better than you, and you're not any better than me. It's, it's you know, but but it's about, it's about, you know, the times that we live in now. You know, if I think back to when I played, uh, way way back, which was probably about four centuries ago or something, like that, it was totally different. Ah, uh, totally different. You know, um, wearing, you know, wearing white boots was like what you wear white boots, or, you know, grow your hair long, or but you know all that kind of stuff just didn't happen. It was short back and sides and black boots on, and you know, whereas it's and it's changed for the better. It really has changed for the better. You know, um, so the transparency bit is is, is great. You mentioned diversity there, Malcolm, like the, the bunch of players that you've got in, you know, they all come from different backgrounds, different countries, you know, Bala Davies, a, a player I always go as an example, she, the first professional, the first professional female football for India. We spoke about this with like Nicola and Kirsty, you know, we just went, to, like, it'd be nice to hear it for your point of view, but it was like, you know, bringing those different players together and, you know, seeing their reactions to, to the big club that Rangers is, you know, we all know that it's Rangers, we've all grown up around it, but but people come in for like India and France, etc. What was it like seeing them, seeing like the the training set and everything, and, and just seeing how big the club actually is? Yeah, I, I, you know what? I'm very fortunate. That I've got a lot of experience. I've actually worked in India, so if I reverse it, if I reverse the whole thing for you and say that when I went out to India, I got a shock. I was like, wow, my goodness, where, where have I landed? Where have I landed? What am I going to do here? You know, so. When players come in and you talk about diversity and players come into Rangers Football Club, I have a total understanding that they're, they've, they've landed and you, you've, you've walked through the big blue gates yourselves. You see it, it's daunting. It's absolutely daunting. I spoke to I spoke to uh, Craig Mahon and, and Ross Wilson just on a Zoom there just now and we, we, every day we drive in, we think, wow, look at this place. This, this, is, this is daunting. It is, you know, but it's something to be proud of and it's something that you grow into. So when when likes of Bala and you know and it's been really difficult for Bala and and I've got to say credit to her, um, she's she's had to cope with lockdown, um, living on her own, um, from from India coming here, but can I say that the the Scottish people she she's she's met a lot of friends since she's came here, not just in the team but but people in run about where she stays, um, and she's been made to feel really welcome that Scottish thing that Scottish welcome so. I think society in a whole. Um, I, I think that, that that diversity that's what that's what makes us. You know that that's really what makes us. And and having the respect for each other. Um, you know that, that there's different cultures. Um, there's different things we do. But it's okay to make a mistake when we're together. When we're together, and you know maybe um, not not language and such, but maybe a, an expression of some sorts. Like you know I've worked in Dubai also where certain things, certain mannerisms can, can be seen offensive. Um, so it's been aware of that. Um, but 
when a player comes to to, to Rangers to, to just try and give them the culture of where they're coming to and what, the way people are and they, they'll, they'll act differently just make them aware of it and then they just grow into it and I think again we was going back to the earlier bit in the call where we're, we're, we're such a one club um, and we're such a, a, a welcoming club that it's okay it's, it's alright to come in and make a mistake it's no problem Malky, you've uh, touched on that we're just a kind of one club and I know at the, the men's side of things are trying to have the same sort of, you know, up for the, the elite men's game all the way down through the, to the boys club football. They're trying to have a style of play, is that similar to the elite side of the women's game all the way down? Is it a similar style that you're trying to implement there? So when girls mm-hmm. are maybe coming through the academy? Yeah, it's all about culture. So Rangers Football Club, you know, way back 1872, way back, starts then. There's a culture in there already. And, and all we're doing is we're growing the culture every year. So as for the way we play, we're a relentless team, we're attacking, we're on the front foot. Um, we're actually, you know, the, the, the differences between men and women that I've, I've witnessed is that, you know, it's just the, it's just the, the, the sheer power and the speed um, that, that men have an advantage of um, over over women over over certain certain women, but technically, tactically, you know, there's no difference. Absolutely no difference. The game is probably just played at a slower, a slower rate. You know, um, and who knows? You know, I've been asked that question. Do you think that men and women will ever be will, will they get up there? I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't have that answer. But you know, I know that physically, physically, right now that. That men are probably a wee bit stronger than, than what the women are, um, but in terms of the style of play we've got, in terms of um, you know we're, 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 the, the tactically all that kind of stuff, yeah, we want to try and not not um, no 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 kind of matter the, the the first team the men's first team, but we can adapt our style to to a similarity or a, or a similar a similar um, vein, you know. Yeah. Now. Can I get into that because uh, how good the defensive record's been for the for the, the side? You know, it's what three goals in the league I think it was yeah. that you've conceded. So, you know, men, women, the, the defence seems like the core point of what you're doing. You know, if you're not conceding goals, you're win- you're winning the games. Yeah. You know, more yeah. times than not. Yeah. We spend a lot of time. We spend a lot of time, and you know, we've got the four moments in the game in possession, out of possession, and the transition of both sides. You know, um, but. That, the one thing I will say, probably get myself shot here, I think the, 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 the female players, they take it in. You know, they, they, they actually, they're, 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 they're so intent on in becoming, that making this thing right, that they're, they're so engaged. It's, it's, you know, whereas the some of the guys, the, the, the boys players, are, they're, they're in there from the age of, you know, whether eight, nine, ten years of age, and, and only some, you know, that not, I'm not tarring up to the same brush, but they, they, they become a wee bit blasé, whereas the, the girls have not had the same, you know, coaching or the same kind of attention put on them. So that, you know, when the group that we have just now, that they, they want to learn their sponges, yeah, show me something more, give me, give me more, I want to get better, I want to get better, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just kind of wanting to, um, you know, turn our attention a wee bit more to Sunday, to the game, you know. What's the kind of, Final preparations like in the lead up to to such a big kind of game, especially after you know, I've, as I've said, they've been off for a couple of weeks and the match sharpness might not be a hundred percent there. What's it like trying to get the girls back up to speed for this and then getting straight back into to the season again? Yeah, well, the the, the way that we do it is we we, we plan the week, we, we we plan game to game, so we plan the week. Um, so for this 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 return, we've had we've had two. Two bounce, two friendly games and one bounce game, and we've had three weeks of three weeks of training, um, so that's just the kind of short, mini, tight pre-season. So it's not just about you know the the day before the game and building them up. Um, this week, this week's session's been um, planned and prepared. So it's we've had um, we've had a, a recovery and a regen session. We've then went into an intensive session, an extensive session. We'll then have uh, a, another recovery day off, so it's a home recovery day. We'll come back in and we'll do a match prep, and then we'll we'll be ready for we'll be ready for the Hearts game. Um, and in between in between that, um, we've had various zooms and and 
you know, how we're going, what, what, how we're going to play against Hearts, how we're going to defend against Hearts. And that then relates back into our training. So the training and the video footage, the Zoom calls will, will tie in with each other. And and then and then again, it's just into that relentless attitude that the players have got, that enthusiasm. And as I said, the one thing that we do know is they came back in an unbelievable shape. They they really, as I say, you females, they take things literally and they do, my God, they do. Because they've came back and you can see that every one of them has been dedicated, absolutely dedicated to, to, to being a professional. Just on just on Sunday there, um, you know, uh, Hearts obviously got that that big result against against Hibs earlier before the the season, you know, get get kind of cut short a wee bit. You know, what kind of game can you expect on Sunday for first side like that? They're a particularly young side, aren't they? They're yeah, a young group. So what can you what can you expect for that on Sunday? And you know, what's your you know without giving away too much of your game plan in case there's any Hearts yeah. fans listening, what can you expect for Sunday? I think you know hearts, hearts like like all the. I've been really impressed by the girls' their attitudes, even the teams that we play. You know they play to their strengths. So whatever their whatever their, I think they've got a couple of new players coming in as well. So whatever they, and, and they're obviously coached by by a guy who's played the game, played the game. You know, um, so they'll play to their strengths. You know, and then they'll also I would imagine that they would also have half a mind on their strengths as well because if we they allow us to expose their strengths on them. Um, then it, it, it could become difficult, you know. Um, like, like likewise, with us. we we try to just focus on what we're about because we, we we have a belief in in our group that that that's going to be our style of play and that's the way we're going to play. And if it doesn't work, then we, we can adapt and we can change to 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 shoot depending on what the the circumstances are. But I think Hearts will probably will play. They'll have obviously the first round of games that's that's came and went. Um, they'll have video footage of our games, not just playing against themselves, but other teams. Um, so I think they'll, they'll have a they'll have a, a game plan, a game plan, and a structure that they'll probably try and follow um, to, to to try and you know give us problems, you know. Um, so, but I think what I, I definitely think they'll be competitive. I think just as you said, they're young, so they'll be they'll have legs and they'll be they'll be fit, mm-hmm. and I think they'll, they'll they'll come and have a go. Because obviously you're just back for you know it feels like a lifetime away from from training and stuff. Is Sunday, you know, understand you obviously want the three points, but is it all about getting that performance, you know, crisp and perfect, or is it about getting the girls back in that game, that game mode, and, and getting them back to? Well, you said they were they were getting fit during the lockdown, but is it, you know, crucial about how you play? Is it more about getting them all back as a group and getting them back on a a pitch for a competitive game? I just the, the, probably the competitive game. That that's the bit that um, you know. For as much as we play, you know, we played the two friendly games that we played. There's still a bit. Of, there's still a bit of the friendly mode about it. Um, there's there's chopping and changing involved in it. There's you know. Whereas Sunday Sunday's game is going to be you know going to be that starting eleven going out there to try and win and gain three points. That that will be ultimately what it's about. Um, but the girls, the girls are they're, they're, they're up for. They're up for the challenge because you know the game's going to be on TV and and it's all those things that they're actually embracing now. So they they don't see things as a as a roadblock anymore. They 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 just see that here's a circumstance, here's a solution to it, or here's a circumstance I'm going to enjoy it. Um, so they're you know we, we when we first got together, um, you know I, I think for some the, the, it was like that blue jersey came on that badge was there and it was like wow how, how, how am I going to handle this whereas now it's no that, that that this is my this is this is like my uniform this is my badge I'm part of a big organisation part of a big team I contribute the reason I'm part of the team is I'm good enough and they go in the park and they play hmm. it's, it's madness to think how many you know we were speaking to Kirsty Howitt you know a couple of weeks ago and she was talking about um that time that she, the time that she signed, and the first thing she did was text her dad, and you know it was an emotional moment. So I can imagine that for them to go back out, it must be, it must be probably overwhelming. You probably see a couple of tears. Probably for me as well, I'll probably be sitting there crying happy tears that I'm back watching live football in Scotland again. So probably be the only one greeting. With the um, oh sorry, sorry, Matt, go ahead. No, no, carry on. Sorry, yeah. I was going to say with with the girls, one thing I, I found. Um, I mean, I've only spoke to, obviously, Kirsty, spoke to um, Nicola, 
and I've spoke to Emma away from this podcast. And, and one thing I really have took from it and from being in games, I think the last game of that was the, the Motherwell game, which probably would have been the last home game, I think. Um, one thing I've took from it is sometimes in a team you'll have leaders. You'll have leaders on a pitch. You'll have people who kind of like, if something's not quite going right, they drag you out of it. Steven Gerrard was known as one for Liverpool. But when I've watched Rangers this season, there's kind of leaders all over the pitch. Yeah, there's a few sort of younger players um, that are probably getting used to coming back um, into playing regular football. But the likes of Nick, Kirsty, even though she's been here a short time, true leader. Emma, maybe a bit quieter, but total leader. How much of a benefit is that to you and, and your team that you've got basically what appears to be a team that's got more than just one or two people that lead from the front? Yeah, that, that, that's my... You know, we speak about the culture that we're trying to create. So we know that everybody's got a voice in there and they can speak their mind. So there's no problem with speaking your mind and having an opinion. Um, and it's up to everybody else to respect that opinion because everybody's opinion matters. So the girls know that. They know, the players know that, that they can they can, they can, they can talk to me, they can talk to their fellow players as well. In terms of the culture that we try to create, that we say to them, when you, when you, when you, come, when you come to training, bring something. Bring something with you and leave with something. Leave with leave with that was a good session. I learned something, you know. Um, don't don't just come to training and just be just be play, just be bland and oh, well, it's just a training session and it's fine. No, no. Contribute. Because what you then do is you start you start creating leaders and as people all over the park that they're, they're leading each other. Um and and for me, I think we're you know, a perfect example just now is is, is Brogan Hay. Brogan Hay, who, when I first went there, was quite, you know, um, you know, bro, quick, absolutely rapid, quick, you know, good player, skillful, very quiet. Um, and But you could tell she wasn't timid, not in any shape or form, was she timid because she's a brave girl, but very quiet. And if you look at her now in training, she's vocal, she's, she's in about it, she's, you know, but I think that's because she's in a good group of people and in a, in, a, in a good environment that she feels comfortable to to then express that. You know, there'll be there'll be other ones like myself now who's, who's very talkative. I'm in the group and I can be quieter now because I don't have to go and look for that. You know, to draw out the out of players or that I can I can step back from it and allow other people to 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 to, to engage and become the leaders as such. You know, um, who's who's the loudest then? The loudest. <laughs> <laughs> the, loud, the loudest is going to be oh, dear idea who would be who would be who would be vocal? looking at training videos I feel like you know I know that's not a full thing but I feel like um, you know despite I'm not English being a first language but I feel like Dana Bona is a character Dana's, Dana's, um, 100% Dana. a character Dana's so Dana's funny she's funny she's actually got she's actually got a French accent with a twang of Scottish on it yeah. But sometimes you can have a Scottish accent with a twang of French on it. It's just it's crazy. It's a clever girl. She's very clever. I follow, I follow her on Instagram and when men just won the league, um, our Instagram stories were just outstanding. She was putting up, I mo- I moan the bears. And I read it and I realised we didn't accent. I thought, oh, she's French. And I just, I just buckled for ages. She was putting up any Insta stories she's seen for Rangers. She was putting it up in her story just and I think she was maybe texting Nicola Dockery like what can I put on this story <laughs> Nicola Dockery they've been like right let's say let's all put Instagram stories up it's honestly hilarious I just can imagine it already there was a one two that she played with someone I can't remember who it was and I'm sure it was a Motherwell game and it was like because I think she scored one or two in that um, I think she took one of the penalties and just before she put the penalty she did like one two and I'm sure it would be with them could have been with Kirsten, I'm not sure. But she did a, a one-two and me and Louise were at the side. And I think I've mentioned this before. And she's like in this kind of, obviously for an accent, was Giza, Giza back, Giza back. <laughs> and it was like the accent was just perfect. Um, so she's perfected the accent at least, bless her. Uh, she's good. She's good. There's lots of characters. That, that, you know, they're, they're, they've got, the, you know, you have some, some Lizzie Arnott's a totally different character, but, but quite a funny girl as well who's, and quite open to to being part of the pranks and stuff like that and talking. So they're a good bunch. They really are. And I, we actually spoke about it today. The fact that they actually enjoy coming to Rangers because what a privilege it is to play for Rangers Football Club or coach with Rangers Football Club or have a job or in about Rangers Football Club. Um, so you've got to enjoy it. You must enjoy it, you know. 
just on that, obviously different characters and, and bringing in different things. A bit of a random question, but um, we spoke about, about this before the call. Do any of the players play a musical instrument? Uh, well, funny you should say that because the, the, the piano, I think there's one of them plays the piano who's unbelievable. Um, Hannah, Hannah plays the piano. Dana, Dana, well, we Dana, she's probably plays the maracas. She probably runs about the maracas, shaking them, you know. Do you know what? There, there's, there's some hidden talent in there. Brianna Westrop plays the guitar and sings. Oh, we'll need to hear that. At a level, I'm, no, at a level, let me tell you. Just like Hannah, Hannah plays the piano at a level. We're not talking, we're not talking just Dana where we set up maracas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, no, there, there, there's, there, there, there's a wealth of talent in there. Brianna's a real character as well. Obviously, I was touching before and that I work with the football company. It's down in the northeast. And obviously, she was at Newcastle last year and she played in a division below the division that I work in. And um, no disrespect to Newcastle, but you could kind of see that she was miles ahead. And I think when she went to Rangers and she was uh, made professional. I can honestly say there was no one in northeast football that found it unusual or weird or oof, that's quite a step up. Everyone just went, oh, well, that was happening. That was always going to come in. You've obviously given her the captaincy at some point. So, how highly do you rate her at the moment? Well, when we're when we're you know when we're recruiting players, um, is is it Rangers? Is is, is all the girls know? We're, we're all we're always looking at you know talent that's, that's available, but it needs to be the right. It needs to be the right fit, you know. So. The likes of Brianna, um, everything that came back from Brianna, all the contacts that we had made, um, she, you know, came back great girl, good character, hundred percent, ah, blah blah blah. So for us as a staff, and um, it was it was great to be able to because we speak about body, ball, mind, and game, you know, and we try to tick those those boxes off. You know, can you handle the ball? Um, what you like physically, you know, how much game knowledge have you got, you know, uh, what's 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 the mindset like, you know, so we try and, you know, we try and go through that process, but, but we, what we got coming back for all our coaches was that that she was she was a good, as you would say, a good lass for, for, for Newcastle, I take it. Don't end officially, but I'll, I'll not be offended, don't worry, we won't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel we'll be on the call and I'll think like we can actually have a wee bit of banter. Just like the yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll let you off for once. <laughs> no more, though. All right. Okay, sorry. I'll <laughs> so, as you've been saying, Malky, you know that there's loads of girls from from all over. You know, we've got France, etc. In, in the squad, how much more difficult is it, especially during COVID, that maybe the girls can't go and do like team bonding activities out with, you know just meeting up basically at trainings and stuff like that. How, how much more harder is it to, you know, try and get that, you know, build this good bond between the players? Yeah, it's been it's been hard because we had, you know, we've got we've got we've got lots of things that we would normally do. Normally we would have been, you know, maybe going and um you know, playing a bit of badminton, playing a bit of basketball, that that kind of thing, having having team, you know, the, the away days where we, we go and build rafts and all that kind of, you know, the kind of stuff that normal work, workforces do, you know. Yeah. Um, but we've we've not had that, you know, we've not even we've, guys, we've not even been able to go for dinner, which is which is massive, you know. We've never been able to sit and have lunch together or, or do anything like that. And you're right, what you say, especially the girls that are abroad, you know, the the the, the girls from France and India. And especially Bala, that's why Bala has been nothing short of fantastic. I mean, she's a credit to herself and her own family, given the fact that she's been, you know, she's been stuck in lockdown in herself and, and had to deal with that. Um, albeit, you know, with the technology nowadays, there's Zoom calls and uh, last name though, no, Adam Melvin on his Zoom call actually using <laughs> um, absolutely. They call me picnic just so you know, problem in computer problem in problem in chair, not in computer. Um, <laughs> just we got that one out as well. Um, yeah, so it's we been... need to keep that for the for the title of this picnic. It needs to go. A yeah, picnic, picnic. picnic, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so for the title. for these guys that have, you know, we had to do everything by Zoom, you know. So, um, you know, so we've been constantly doing Zooms on, you know, on the game, on on all the games we've played. We've done Zoom, all different variations of Zooms. You know, it's been it's been good. It's been good fun as well doing it. 
Um, but probably one of the best things that we did was we, we had a, a Zoom call by the manager, by by the gaffer. He came on and, and he spent, it was, it was meant to be on for 20 minutes, but ended up on for over an hour with the, with the girls just talking about his life and talking about football. And that, that was just unbelievable. So I, I, I think as a club, right from, from top to bottom, you know, it's been great and it's been it's been it's been good that we've we've always had, you know, we've always had that ability to share ideas and, and have a, a group of staff to share ideas. Well, I done this room, what about that for an idea for you? Oh, yeah, I might do that. How did you do this? How did you do that? So we just kept them engaged and kept them kept their spirits up and um, you know we would even for us as a staff as well. You know, it's it was difficult and the, the only concern that we had was just their well being to make sure that they were. They were in a good place and that they were coping, especially the ones that are, that are on their own and, and, and living alone and missing their own families who would be in a different country. So um, it was important to make those calls and have have the experience of you know mental health nurses and stuff like that around about us that that we could we could talk to. You know, there's a lot of conversation um, surrounding the whole of the game, men's, women's, whatever it may be, about how players are coping within this environment, and I think you know, individuals that we all have our own way and athletes have their own way as well. But there's not always a great deal of chat about coaches and coaches. I imagine like anyone you learn every day, you learn something new consistently um, and you want to be out there coaching all the time and, and you've been stopped from doing that for, well, not going on four months. Um, what have you learned about yourself and your coaching techniques from the period of time where you've not really been able to coach in person? Well, I think the one thing I've noticed is I've missed that, you know, so did I, you know, did I miss it? How much did I miss it? And I think you've got, the older you get, you, you ask yourself that question. I think, um, I think I missed the, you know, the girls football is new to me, but it's also new to, to the, the players that I'm coaching just now and it's their first year of being professional. So there was that kind of, you know, when something's new, it's exciting and you've, you've not done it a lot and it's, you know, so you're always engaged with it. So I knew that, I knew that I had missed it. I also knew that I cared a wee bit, you know, that I was missing them, um, especially in the last question there about being on their own. And because I've worked abroad, I've been, I was in India myself for a year on my own, on my on my absolute jack in a big house, living myself. And it was hard, it was really tough. And the fact that you're away for your family, you're away for your friends, you're trying to win games, the, the just, just the kind of loneliness of it, being on your own. Because um, I'm, 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 as you know, I, I'm quite a sociable person. I I I don't like my own company. I, I need to be around about people. I know that I need to talk to people. Then it can be anybody. It doesn't matter. Just I need that contact. So um, I knew that that was important um, to be in contact with the players. But things like um, you know things like you know reflecting on looking at what what, what we've done in training. What's the squad? How can I improve? How how would I go about improving when we're going back individually and collectively? Well, you know, so asking yourself that question. Um, but again, the club, the club were fantastic again because we're all in isolate. We're all we're all in lockdown. Some of us furloughed at certain periods and certain times, but the the backing of the club has been fantastic. And I don't think you get that for every club, you know, because one can they all do it financially, and two, you know, I, I just think it's a good, it's a good, it's just the structure of the things good. It's, it's just they're there to look after the the person. Mm. Have you just got anything else to add? Because yeah, I've got so much to add. I was just going mm. to let you have your own way. I was, I was going <laughs> to let yourself go there for a bit. I was just going to let you go with it. You want to take it away then, Graham? If you've got anything, yeah, of course. Um, probably the big one, and I know as as a head coach and manager, you 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 will go by the Stephen Gerrard mantra of one game at a time. Um, go on, come in. <laughs> But <laughs> the Glasgow City have, have won the league season after season after season after season. Um, Celtic and, sorry for saying that, um, and both Rangers have both gone professional, obviously, yeah. this year. And I think the Glasgow City game, we've touched on a few times in this podcast, but it's kind of hard not to, um, because it did feel the words were like a changing of the guard. Obviously, as players, you don't think you've won the league in December. Um, but now that you've got dates to play games now that you know you're top of the league um 
how determined are you to make sure that it's not just the men's team that won the league this season? It's it's a double header and, and Celtic finished second in, in both both leagues. I odd in there. <laughs> no, I Sorry. think I think you're right. I think I think when we go game by game, so we go game by game, and then we get to a point. I think you get to a point. I've done it myself. We, you know, when I was at Inverness, and you know, there it was about survival. It was about staying in the league, staying in the Premier League. But you get to a period in the league where you 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 afford yourself a wee half an eye to look a wee bit further forward and that's the, that's the bit where you've got to be very cautious that you're you know me as a coach I may do that but the message is still to to not even go game by game go training session by training session break it down it's, it's, it's a strange way in my head that it actually goes down to training session by training session that you're actually saying to yourself right, what am I going to do we play Sunday we're off Monday, I'm in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What am I going to do in that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to make sure that I'm ready for the Sunday game? And I think when you do that and you put that process in place, so we go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're off Friday, we're back in Saturday, match prep, we play Sunday. You get ready for that game. And I think I think it's important that you, you that you don't kind of look too far ahead of, ahead of yourself and get caught up with yourself or, or think that or expect to win, you know? Um, but I, but I would imagine just like other other coaches out there and other players out there that they have a belief in themselves and they'll probably keep it private that they believe they're the best. I certainly hope that any of the players that that come and play with Rangers believe that the 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 they're there for a reason. They're there because they're good enough or they're going to be there, and that they can actually transmit that around the team and then put it into the games and win the games. Speaking on title wins, obviously we were very well aware that the Rangers men's side went and won the league in, in March there. Um, huge, huge times, you know, the celebrations at the training centre were massive. We could see that for the videos that probably shouldn't have been posted, but we've seen them but anyway. You, I see you running a bit, jumping up and down. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, we, uh, we spoke about that with Kirsty and Nicola. Um, you know, about when they were went back to training, you know, it's that same old you go through the blue gates, so you know exactly how much is expected of you. But was it a different feeling almost going through the gates when you came back to training, knowing that, you know, that success was lingering in there? Um, you know, I spoke to Kevin about it and he said that the, the atmosphere, he described it as like a a winning, a winning atmosphere. You could feel it around you. And, and obviously the girls must have felt that as well. So you just think that you've kind of got that advantage over other clubs chasing that title as well. You've got that. That obviously Glasgow City won it last year. They still have that, you know, mentality. But you guys have physically got that, you know, winning mentality around you all the time with the men's club. So, do you think that's like an advantage you guys have got this year that you've got that around you? I think, I think, if there, if there's any advantage to have, it's we've got each other. You know, the players have got each other. Um, the staff have got the players back. The, the directors, the, the the first team men's, you know, that one club thing that we speak about. Um is it's massive. It's massive to, to massive to think that, you know, that we're we're part of well certainly for me anyway, that you're you're working for Rangers Football Club, you know. Um it's a big, big deal. I, I don't think that, you know, listen, I've been down, down south, Birmingham and Blackpool and been running about and that and but Rangers is Rangers. You know, it's it's, it's 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 even a Rangers fan. You know, I support Glasgow Rangers. It's it's you go any, go anywhere in the world. You know, I, you go you go and go and mention Rangers anywhere, and people go, oh, yeah, that's that Scottish team. They know people know, so it's it's smart. But what the the first team done by winning the league there has has it just gave a belief. You know, gave an absolute belief and an energy and I think that's the big word is to use is energy I think it gives energy and it gives the the, 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 the women's game energy it certainly gives your players energy they they want to to, to be down be down in history and win, win a title because if you look back on it um, and you're a women's player and you've yeah I, I, I played in you know I, I played in that season 2021 uh, the COVID kicked in there, but we won the league. We won the league that year. We were the first, you know, to win. That is that is not going to go. That's that's going to be there forever, you know. So, I think the girls know that. And by the way, you're, you're not guaranteed to do it. You ain't guaranteed to do it. 
but day, game by game, training session by training session, you know, attention to detail. You know, it's, 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 everybody's got two arms and two legs, you know, you, you, anything's possible. There was, a, there was two, um, two clubs a couple of weekends ago I had the, the privilege of attending the Tottenham and Arsenal women's game at Tottenham Stadium. Oh, yeah. And sitting there, you know, obviously I was in huge disbelief that I was there to start with, but while I was there, I couldn't help but think, you know, it would be so good to be able to sit at Ibrox in the press box knowing that you're watching the women's game. You know, the men's game, I, you know, I like Rangers, but, you know, women's football is, is my thing. So, yeah. but do you see, do you see that in the future for the Rangers women to be at Ibrox? I would, I would like, I would, I would love that we could play at Ibrox. I, I, I don't know that, I think that the, the bit is that it would need to fit into the, the, the schedule for the, for the men's game because of the amount of money, there's a vast amount of money involved in, in men's football. You know, I think that's the, that's where the, you know, the, the women's football could, could, could we bring in 55,000 every week and pay the, you know, I mean, you know, has, it, has it got that audience, you know? Um, just to say, you don't know in the future that, that you know, I think, I think, I think what's guaranteed is it's going to get better and better and better. And I think it's going to get more attractive and I think it's going to get, I definitely do. If you just look at something down south there, the investment that, that, that just recently they've made, you know, um, I, um, I, I, I believe that I, I believe this is a start that it's just going to get better. I honestly do. To play at Ibrox, um, it would need to fit into the. It would need to fit into, you know, that that it wasn't it wasn't damaging the pitch. It wasn't you know that the build there be a lot of other things that's way beyond me. The, the you know the, the process of getting that game fitted in might be difficult. Um, but who's to say? Hey, listen, who's to say that maybe maybe that, that there will be that the. the they may be able to to to, to play there. I would, I would love I would, I would love to play there. I mean, I, thought, I know it's Amy McDonald's one. Her dream is dreams is that, that, that she sees the women running it on the Ibrox. And for me, it would it would be it would be it would be fantastic to see that. Whether it can happen or not, um, I don't I don't think that I don't think anybody would stop them. I think if it could, I think if it was if, if it was if they had the ability to do it, I think they would do it. Yeah. Mm. yeah now, just kind of touching on that, it's something I've always thought of, but as you said, about the, you know, whether the grass could handle it or not, but it'd be great to have maybe something that maybe, you know, one game rolls into the other, if you know what I mean, where maybe you get a, more value for money for like the, the supporter, I suppose, where you could maybe go to the women's game kind of earlier on, then go out into a fan zone mix and stuff like that and then come back in and, and watch a men's game or vice versa, depending on whatever way the schedules are. I think that could add to the atmosphere and you could make it, you know, obviously so much more f- family friendly and family orientated. It's something yeah. I would quite like to see. Yeah. I personally think, see if, see if it was Rangers v Celtic women at Ibrox, I honestly think people would be like, F it, we're gone because <laughs> we're all for them. I don't care who's wearing the, the kit, we're gone anyway because let's just sing. I, cannot, I can just imagine Nifla Doherty and Kirsty Howitt and Ibrox like this with the fans on singing the songs I can picture it and I really do hope that it's and then the, this, even just a one off game you know you know, fingers crossed that we're successful this season I do think um, it would bring so so much to the women's game and I think if it was to happen you know relatively soon that it would give the girls that massive boost to go on and, and lift, well, lift the title I think I mean I think the club the club are behind the women's game as you know they've, they've, they've pumped a lot of money into it um, and a lot of time and a lot of effort. Um, so who knows where it goes? And I, and I think I think it's I think the, the the big thing is though that the, the girls are so appreciative of playing for Rangers, so proud of playing for Rangers as well. You know, I think that's that's definitely needs to go there. That every one of them is is, is enjoying the journey that they're having just now. You know, and and, and even for the, the academy, some of the academy girls that have been coaching, some of the younger girls. The actual belief to look and see a Nicola Dockery, a Howard, a Lizzie Arna, a Sam Kerr, a Kirsten Riley, a Chelsea Corner. I need to keep going through them all because if I miss one, they may get upset. <laughs> it's all those players that we've mentioned, you know, Emma Brownlee's, Rachel McLaughlin's, all these, all these guys that play, you know, that, that they can look up to them and say, that's what I want to be. I want to be like her. I want, I want, you know, Christmas, I want my name. I want McLaughlin in the back of my shirt, you know. Um, so I, I, I think I think we're just going to take it step by step and no no go too fast too quick you know and and I think slowly but surely 
Uh, you know, if, I think if, if I ended to say that I would have been coaching the women's first team at Rangers and playing against Celtic and maybe the possibility of, you know, going into the Champions League and stuff like that. Five years ago, I'd have thought you're daft, you know. You're, uh, and also, and here we are sitting talking about it passionately and, and really caring about it, and you know. So it's it's, it's, it's great for me. I, I'm, I've, I've got to say, I've thoroughly enjoyed the the opportunity that the club gave me to, to get involved with women's football. Um, it's, it's, it's been great. As I say, I enjoy people. Uh, I, I love the involvement. But to, you know, to, to make a difference to somebody's life, um, like the girls, you know, the girls there, the, the, you know, I can only imagine what their parents think or their grannies or their partners, you know, that they play with Glasgow Rangers. It's, it's massive. And, and, well, you know yourself, um, Courtney, you're, you're, you're sitting there, I think you probably get your right arm to go and, go and play on Sunday for Rangers, you know? You know, the funny thing is, this is my moment to shine, right? You know, my moment to shine. So... I was actually in the Rangers Academy when I was younger, so I was actually speaking to Nicola Doherty about this, and I was like, it would be funny to think that um, if I didn't have two left feet, let's put it, um, I could, <laughs> uh, I could uh, possibly, I could have, you know, it's the always what if, but it's mad to think that if I'd stuck in at Rangers and, um, you know, gave my full potential, that I could actually be Nicola Doherty's teammate. But, um, no, I'm very grateful and very um, fortunate that the position I'm in, I get to, Boost the women's game externally rather than play it because I'm telling you the now if I was in your team these would be fighting relegation Malky so you'd be very <laughs> be very glad to know that I didn't make it so that's my present for me to you. Didn't get many academy me I, I played I played behind Martin Wagon in the school team but I was very far behind him in terms of ability I had <laughs> three left feet let alone two Courtney so uh, <laughs> you'll be pleased that I neither did not make it because I was for want of a better word shite. <laughs> I think I think see that that you were going back to our earlier question there about you know the the pressures and stuff like that the expectations it's you've really got to you've really got to enjoy the journey you know to for some of the younger girls that are listening in, you know have no don't don't put an expectation level on yourself just go and enjoy it and work hard and learn as much as you can the same as you go to school or you go to you know whatever it is you do you know take the pressure off yourself, go and, especially in this times that we live in now, you know, when I was growing up, it was, oh, you need to get to school and you had to get your O-levels and you had to get your hires and, you know, you needed a job and you needed, there was a lot of pressure back now. I think nowadays, I think it's easier. I really do. And I think, I think you can, you can set O-levels right up to your 75 now and, you know, I'm saying O-levels, probably nobody knows what an O-level is now, but standard grades or whatever it is now, you know. I was going to say, I was going to say, I've not heard of O-levels. Um... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm on top of once. That's the only reason I know. But even even I'm getting on as well, Maggie. To be fair, so I can't say anything. I'm not going on 35 this year, so I'm saying now. Just yeah. on that, Malky, um, we probably do have a lot of young girls listening to this, um, especially young girls that are probably in the academy. Probably some parents, you know, um, yeah. you know, asking their kids to listen to this. So see if you could give any young girl, you know, that one, that young girl that I once was. I might not look like one, but I promise I was. Um, and a young and a Rangers kit that was ten sizes too big for me. Um, if you could give any wee bit of advice to to one of them listening now, what do you think it would be? Well, I, I mean, I, I've been fortunate. I've got um, I've got two kids, so I've got one um, one who who went down to Birmingham and, and you know tried, obviously tried to become a professional player, never made it. Um, and with the oldest, that's my oldest boy. Um, so he he's obviously working, you know, not involved in football now. Um, you know, I wanted to do everything for him as a parent, as a dad, and and it was even worse that I coached football. So I now wanted to coach him and parent him and pull you know, get your shoes shut, eat this, do this, do that. Absolutely on his case all the time, you know, um, and probably, probably never helped him. In fact, I know I never helped him because we talk about it. So I think, and my younger my younger boy who's who's out in the states just now, he's in, he's doing a tennis scholarship South Carolina. I have. I, I'm just a dad with him, so I'm just a dad. He, he goes and plays his matches, and and he's kicked on so much that he, you know, he's he's away hobnobbing with, with you know big names in tennis now and going to camps and goes flies all the world and stuff like that. And I was just a dad to him. Um, so I guess that the parents just be a dad, just be a mum, just be a granny, just be a grandpa, just be a carer. Don't. Um, you know, when, when, when somebody plays the game, if for example, and I've been I've been through it where, 
you've watched your kid play football and you get in the car and you think, oh, but well, you were hopeless, you were you'd done that and you should have done this and you should have done that and ifs and buts and maybes and you know that, that just and it's very difficult because as I say, I have I've I've done it, I've been there. Just come out the road it and be mum, be dad, be supportive, you know, be there, listen to it and and, and let let your child speak to you about listen, I really enjoyed that or listen, I didn't really enjoy it, but I've got a passion for it and or the coach said this to me, let let them speak, let them let them, you know, because especially after the game, if I if I take it to the girls, you know, so we'll play Sunday and we have a hot a hot review and a cold review after each game, you know. So what we'll do is the hot review is we ask the players to there's a there's there's a bit of paper and we're goalie coach goes around Nicola Dockery. Goes round eh, Nicola Dockery. Nicola Hardy goes around. She she gave us the defending. Just give Nick Dock a new job there. Well done, Nicola, if you're listening, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. So, so, big Nick will go in and she'll, she'll get the, the thoughts of the players. Oh, I thought I played well, I didn't enjoy that, I've done this, I've done that. And then in the cold light of day, you know, come a Tuesday when we're all back in, we, 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 go, and, we go through it all and we, and we understand it. So, I think as a parent, you know, I, you know, if you look at, say, for, you know, for example, no, then, Nick Doc's old man, you know, Nick, Nick Doc's dad. You'll be so proud that she's, that he's, that she's on, you know, Kirsten Howitt, you know, um, Kirsten Howitt, so proud that they're, that they're playing. Just enjoy, just enjoy the fact that they're, they're in the academy or they're playing with a team and, and don't, you don't need to put any expectation or any pressure on because it, it, it just doesn't work, you know, especially, you know, to try and coach, to try and coach when you're a parent doesn't work. Just doesn't work, you know. You need you need to be there to just listen and, and don't don't get me wrong. Listen, I think if you're if you're, you know, I fell out with the the, the, the youngest one with the tennis. If he smashes a racket, because the rackets are about two hundred and forty quid, fifty. <laughs> so he gets told, you know what I mean? Don't be. I mean, uh, I'm not saying don't. You know, I'm just saying be a parent. You know, I think that's the best bit of advice that you could you could give. You know, and let and let let dafties let me coaches let me just go and coach and. <laughs> Just winging it all the way to a title. That's a wing it all the way. I get. I like that. That would be good. <laughs> that's, that's good. Ability to that one. There you are. <laughs> I think that that's us. I think we can call that a wrap. Eh? Um, now, um, thanks very much, Malky, for for joining us tonight. And, oh, appreciate it. And cool. Yeah, I'm shaking. You wanna go out? I wanna stay.